What's up Ocean? You got Matt here and welcome to another Crown Tundra moveset guide. Today we're going to be talking about one of the brand new legendary horses, Glacefear, and I'll also be explaining why I believe it is one of the most underrated threats in the competitive Pokemon metagame. As always guys, if you're interested in competitive Pokemon content, consider subscribing to the channel. We are on the road to 1,000 subscribers and we cannot do it without you, but without further ado, let's go ahead and jump right into it. Starting off with its stats, this Pokemon has insane stats for an amazing bulky tanky Pokemon. The issue is it has the worst defensive typing in Ice. Ice literally resists only one type, and that's Ice. It's weak to four other types, being Fire, Fighting, Rock, and Steel, and it takes neutral damage from the rest of them. The good news is, looking at the stats that it has, it fits really well on quite a few different teams, most notably being Trick Room. With its 145 attack and 30 speed, it becomes an effective wall breaker demolishing the entire meta. Even though it doesn't have the greatest defensive typing, because of its stats alone, it could really be on the field for quite a long time, continuously taking chip damage and really just dishing out powerful attacks over the course of the entire battle. Looking at its ability, it's basically Moxie. That's what Chilling Nay is. It boosts the attack up by one stage whenever it gets a KO, which can be super useful, especially under Trick Room when this thing will usually be under speeding the entirety of the tier in OU and a lot of your opponent's Pokemon if you're playing in Draft League, for example. Now let's talk about some of its coverage options, including the moves that it does and does not get. Obviously, the big one is its Stab, Ice Attacks, Ice Crash, Ice Spear are the big one. Avalanche as well are the only three physical Ice Attacks that it does get, but it's got tons of other great coverage options. Close Combat, High Horsepower, Crunch, gets access to body press, heavy slam as well, lash out, mega horn, outrage, stopping tantrum just to be safe as well could be very useful, and also gets taunt as well to stop potential setup sweepers that are obviously a lot slower or just bulky mods that would be annoying as hell to deal with. I think taunt is probably not going to be run as much as it would be on Spectrier, but it's still a very solid option nonetheless. And of course, it gets Swords Dance just boosting its attack up. It's absolutely phenomenal because it can really break through a lot of the Pokemon that would normally be checking it. Unfortunately, I do believe that's missing some key moves, and the big one, I'm just going to say it, recovery or synthesis or something along those lines if it got one of those moves oh my god this pokemon would be absolutely phenomenal it'd be amazing i think it would be a staple on so many different teams because even though its defensive typing is terrible having that ability to recover back some hp makes it come in on a lot of different pokemon very often ability to boost its attack up by one stage every time it gets a ko just all that together makes it so hard to deal with but unfortunately it doesn't the good news is there's a lot of really good sets to run with glacier even without recovery so let's go ahead and jump into some potential sets for this pokemon the first set i really want to touch on is going to be a choice band set i think this is going to be the biggest and most common sets you're going to be seeing, whether it's on the OU ladder or even if you're playing Draft League. With Icicle Crash, Close Combat, High Horsepower, and Crunch, you hit the entirety of the game for neutral or better damage, which is amazing. I think it's like 700 and something Pokemon you actually hit for super effective damage with these four types, which is huge. I think it's very important to have a lot of really good type coverage, and that's definitely what this accomplishes. You guys see the 44 speed EVs there. The reason I'm running that is because it's there for no speed Toxapex, just so you can fire off a Choice Bandit high horsepower and be able to do a ton of damage to that thing. Or if it's in range of an Icicle Crash, let's say after you start getting the ball rolling with your Chilling Nays, getting boosts in your attacks, then that's definitely a really solid option to go with over there. Other than that, I did want to have a speed set for Trick Room because you look at it now with its speed being at zero, with its IVs at zero, it's got a brave nature as well. It's effective under Trick Room, under speeding absolutely everything, firing off huge high horsepower, close combats, icicle crashes, and crunches. It can be very, very tough for your opponents to deal with with this Pokemon. Other than that, I do have a Life Orb set here, mostly because Life Orb would be good for you to change up your moves, just in case you feel like you need to switch up your moves because you already have, let's say, the power on this Pokemon. You don't feel like you need any more of that. Maybe you're running a spike stacking team and you feel like you don't need the band to get appropriate Okos and Tua KOs that Life Orb cannot provide you because you have spikes or stealth rocks or whatever the case may be, I definitely find that Life Orb is definitely a possibility. Only issue is it, it takes 10% of your health away, which is unfortunate because Glacier really wants to be as healthy as possible to take a hit or two before dishing out the damage that's going to be dishing out because let's be honest, usually it's going to be under speeding your opponent, so you really want to make sure you can take that one hit and then fire back the killing blow and destroying that Pokemon that would be opposing you. Next up though, I do have a rest talk set to talk about. Icicle Crash and Stomping Tantrum is here. The reason I'm running Stomping Tantrum over High Horsepower, again, this is completely up to you if you want to run this, but just in case you're going for rest talk and you roll sleep talk and you end up rolling rest, then that move will fail because you're already asleep. You then wake up, go for Stomping Tantrum. It'll be, instead of being the 75 base power that you guys see here, it'll be 150 base power because the previous move will have failed. Definitely find that's going to be a pretty cool set. And again, the reason why I chose this coverage instead of something like Crunch or Superpower is because with these two moves, or with Ice and Ground coverage, you hit the entirety of the metagame for neutral or better damage except for 
the Araquanid line, the Frozmoth line, and the Galissapod line, and Surskit. But everything else gets hit for neutral or better, which is huge, and you have recovery and rest and sleep talk. Very, very valuable. Leftovers for a little bit of passive recovery. Again, speed on this thing still for talk specs just in case, and we can just continue firing off super effective stomping tantrums, high horsepowers, whatever the case may be against those Pokemon. Definitely feel like this set is going to see a lot more play on bulkier teams, and they'll really be able to take advantage of a lot of Pokemon in the metagame. Now, kind of taking this set a little bit further, we have the Resto Chesto set with Iron Defense, Body Press, Icicle Crash, and Rest with the Chesto Berry, obviously. This set, again, speed for the Toxapex. With Body Press, there's not going to be as much variety as the things you're going to be hitting with Stomping Tantrum or High Horsepower, but you have to boost up your defense with Iron Defense and then fire off Body Presses from basically a 130 base attack Pokemon. I'm saying attack in air quotes. And then you have Bicycle Crash, still getting the boost from Chilling Nay. Definitely find this set can see a lot of play as well, and it just has a lot of benefits going for it. I think this is a very solid set nonetheless, and this set just should not be messed with at all. All right, now let's go ahead and talk about some potential teammates. I brought up a few. The first one I have are the Slowbro and Slow King. I feel that these Pokemon are very solid to pair with Glacier because one, they resist three of the four types that Glacier is weak to, being Fire, Fighting, and Steel. They also provide Trick Room support for Glacier, and they provide it with Teleport so you can get in very freely and just start wrecking shop with this Pokemon. Other than that, I think Ground types are very important to have with this Pokemon because they can punish the types that would be resisting Ice normally, including other Ice types because most Ground types have coverage for them with Steel, Fighting, or Rock coverage. One that really rings a bell to me is going to be Excadrill because it provides you with an amazing Rapid Spinner. At the same time, you have Steel Stab to destroy Ice types and you're just an insanely powerful Pokemon all around. We all know how strong Excadrill is. It's one of the staples in the current OU metagame, and it's just one of the best Pokemon in Giraffe League in general, so I definitely feel like Excadrill paired with Glacier would be an amazing combination. And the last type that I want to cover is going to be Electric types. I think a really strong Electric type that also gets good pivoting options is very valuable. Something like Zorora, Regilecki, or Coco are very, very valuable because they provide you with that pivot, but also because they destroy water types that really would be coming in plaguing Glacier. At the same time, Glacier can destroy the grass types and the ground types that would be resisting or immune to the electric type attacks. Overall, these types of Pokemon here, ones with momentum and trick room, Pokemon that are ground types that really punish ice types and other resists to ice as well, and amazing electric types are fantastic to pair with this Pokemon. All right, now let's talk about some of its strengths and weaknesses. For its strengths, let's start off with that. It has really, really good coverage options. Like I said before, with just four moves, these four moves over here, it can hit the entire metagame for neutral or better damage. Most of them, you're hitting for super effective damage, so it's very, very positive. It's also really unique in its role. There are like no ice types that are this bulky and hit this hard while maintaining the ability to have good coverage options. It's very, very rare to have. I think the bulkiest one that comes to mind when I think of Glacier is going to be Avalug, but then you think of offensive ice types like Weavile, and you look at Glacier, and Glacier has a lot higher attack than Weavile does. So it's, it's really unique in the fact that it can kind of do both roles. Obviously, the speed is not there, but it's still very unique nonetheless. And I also think it probably is one of the two best Pokemon to use in all of Trick Room. I'd say the best one would be Alolan Marowak, but other than that, it's, it's very close. I think this is a phenomenal addition to all Trick Room teams. It's going to be very, very scary for us non-Trick Room players to deal with. Now let's talk about some of its weaknesses. First off, its typing is terrible. I really don't like the typing. I feel it's not that great. I mean, it's, it's, it's Ice type. We know it has tons of weaknesses. We know it doesn't resist very much. That's a problem. Another issue is that it doesn't get any recovery outside of Rest. I feel like while Rest is really good to have on a Rest Talk set or a Resto Chesto set, it's very situational and most of the time you're going to want to run a Choice Band set or a Life Orb or Trick Room variant because you're going to be using it on Trick Room teams. One of the biggest weaknesses I do find though that it's going to be super prone to getting status, whether it's Poison, whether it's Paralysis, or it's Burn, because they all really hurt Glacier. If you get paralyzed, you have a chance to not attack, and if you can't attack, it means you're taking more damage, which Glacier can't recover off. If you're poisoned, you're going to be losing health every turn, and it just makes it a lot harder for you to stay healthy and, again, continue to fire off attacks. And obviously, if you're burnt, reducing your attack by half is going to be a game changer and really make it a lot easier for people to deal with Glacier in the format. If you guys have any other potential strengths and weaknesses for Glacier, let me know down in the comments. I'd love to read them. I answer to every single comment that I get on my videos. Now, at the beginning, I said I'd explain why I think it is super underrated, and here's why. The reason is that out of all the new Pokemon that have been released in the Crown Tundra, this thing, Glacier, has received the least amount of hype, and that's very surprising to me. It's a very good Pokemon. It is. It's solid all around, and that's the best way I can put it. It does have a lot of weaknesses, but they are definitely manageable, and its strengths are very, very solid as well. Here's the issue, though. If it had the same stats as Spectrier, but its special attack and its attack were flipped, 
Oh, come on. We all know what would be the best horse. It would definitely be Glacier. But that's going to be it, guys. If you guys have any other set suggestions or thoughts on Glacier, let me know down in the comments below. Also, do me a favor and like the video as well if you enjoyed it. And of course, like I said before, subscribe to the channel if you have not already. We're on the road to a thousand subscribers and I cannot do it without you guys. If you guys are interested in other competitive Pokemon content, I posted a video on each of the Galarian birds. So make sure to go and check that out. They'll be all linked in the description and in the cards at the top right of your screen. Make sure to come back tomorrow for a moveset guide on Spectrier. I can't wait for that one to go up. It's going to be a lot of fun. You guys won't want to miss it. But thank you all so much for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it and I will see you all next time.